Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Emperor's Voice Podcast. I am Emperor K, your host again, and we will be covering the news from October the 12th, 2015 to October the 16th, 2015. And the week's hip headlines in the gaming industry this week, a possibility of a Half-Life 3. Could there be another game in the famous industry for the first-person shooter that has taken PC and PlayStation by storm? The beta count for Star Wars is in, and it is the largest ever in EA's recorded history. And what could happen with the NX is it could possibly link consoles and handhelds somehow. Nintendo is still keeping a lid on what it is capable of doing. So we'll go to the main headlines this week, and uh, there could be a possibility of a Half-Life 3 in the future. It's been 11 years since the Half-Life 2's release uh, in the orange box, so with uh, the great games like Portal and uh, Team Fortress, including the three episodes of Half-Life 2. Apparently, it could have been leaked uh, through a text document uh, that was sent to the uh, Dota 2 game that uh, Steve is also bro- uh, also responsible for creating. Well, I'm, I've been a big fan of the uh, Half-Life uh, 2 game myself. Uh, in fact, we've got the orange book, uh, the orange books uh, in our well in our collection, and it was w- it was a really great game. I have to say, it's uh, one of those games that's aged uh, throughout the years, like Fine Wine, you've got to really play it to understand it, um, especially with all those uh, <laughs> aliens uh, that we've uh, been shooting around uh, trying to uh, kill all of humanity, and uh, the secret government thing, uh, I've really hadn't had much time to play the uh, Half-Life series on myself, but uh, that was, uh, it was a leak to, um, to the two uh, in a text document, the .txt, um, According to uh, the source uh, of this uh, report, it could be uh, from the AI, or it was part of a script that was originally sent to the um, producers of the game. So, it might not actually happen, or it might actually happen. Uh, it all depends on uh, when the perfect time to release Half-Life is. Because Steam, it's uh, a PC company. Uh, they develop games for PC. They even have the uh, Steam Store. Uh, well, Valve is the company that's made the Half-Life series. And I'm uh, very well respected. They even set up the Steam Store. Or where we can get access to all those great PC games. Like Lego Batman and uh, uh, Dota 2. Uh, well, there have been a lot of uh, great PC games. And uh, well, Steam also has this um, developer tools uh, that it sells. Uh, like uh, RPG Maker or a uh, uh, video game maker. Uh, I've got um got RPG Maker of the X Ace edition and uh, I really enjoy using the tool. I I'm still using it to develop an RPG of my own and uh, I quite enjoy it. Uh, well, well uh, back to the main topic at hand, uh, Half Life Three. I think it could be possible, but it all depends on, uh, like I said, on uh, whether or not it's the perfect time to unleash it. Could it still have the great same storytelling capabilities? That that's what I like about a video game. It tells a story, and Half Life. If uh, in the past it has done some wonderful storytelling uh, to all of its uh, players, even though I haven't understood it uh, fully myself, I really would like to get back into the game uh, someday. You know, hopefully when I get uh, the time to do so. Well, Half-Life 3, uh, when it was uh, link- leaked to Dota 2 uh, through a text document, it could have been a slip by uh, one of the developers uh, as, uh, that was uh, originally coming up with uh, Half-Life 3. Well, if it could be happening or not, but uh, we've—I'm sure if you've played uh, some of the Half-Life uh, games, you would like to see the Half-Life uh, Three come on uh, released uh, maybe for next-gen consoles or possibly exclusively for the PC. I don't know. Well, I've also heard that there was a Gary's Mod game uh, somewhere. I'm not really a big fan of mod games uh, that was uh, used um, on f- well, but for other games that. All the way to original series uh, stuff. Uh, so, if you really want to see the Half Life 3 game uh, possibly come out for PC, just uh, leave a comment on YouTube or Facebook. And now, on to some other news. Well, this is going to be a really big one. Uh, StarCraft beta count was announced uh, some time ago. Uh, I think it was Wednesday that it uh, came out. Uh, 9 million players played the beta for Star Wars Battlefront. Uh, it's the upcoming uh, Star Wars shoot 'em up game uh, that uh, everyone's uh, enjoyed. We all missed uh, the old Battlefront games when it was first released for the PlayStation 2, and let me tell you, I'm quite stoked about this game. Uh, according to the report, uh, this was actually the largest beta trial for EA and DICE. Not a th- I have never even heard of a single company that has done something as huge as the Star Wars Battlefront beta. Uh, I really would have liked to have uh, got my hands on the beta if I had the time, uh, but I've been uh, so busy this week, it uh, 
well, it could have happened. But I'll have to wait until the game is released, and uh, that's uh, something that I'm really, really looking forward to. And uh, according to uh, another report uh, that was uh, published uh, to gaming websites, uh, the Rebels were underhanded. Uh, I think they didn't get much of a, of a balance uh, advantage uh, when it comes to the Empire, so... Uh, Dice is probably going to want to uh, correct this uh, change in the balance uh, stuff. Uh, <laughs> the force is tipped. <laughs> I'm off all this kind of stuff. Um, so the rebels are probably going to get uh, a bit of a uh, enhanced uh, gameplay experience, and uh, I'm really looking forward to what could happen, especially with the online stuff. Um, betas are normally, uh, if you haven't ever played a beta, let me explain. It's where players get access, well, limited access to some of the game's uh, content. Uh, I've played uh, a beta for World of Warcraft in the past, uh, when it was um, World of Warcraft Cataclysm and uh, World of Warcraft Mr. Pandaria. And it w and the great thing that I liked about it is I get to try, I had a chance to try some of the uh, new content that was occurring, especially with the Pandarans uh, and the new ra the new race and the new class, uh, the Monk. That was, that was really fun for me, and uh, I'm glad I got a chance to uh, try and play it uh, before it was officially released, and, uh, well, there was no cutscenes uh, in the beta, uh, which was, uh, well, it was alright, but um, when, it was, when it was finally released, uh, I quite enjoyed the cutscenes, uh, it was all beautiful. You could actually feel calm when you saw the um, your character leave the island, and... Well, betas are they're a great way of uh, getting into the game early if you're a diehard fan or you just uh, don't have uh, the money to do so and you want to play a beta, play a game uh, before it's released. Yeah, so 9 million players. I have never even heard of something as ridiculous as this. This has got to be one of the biggest uh, in not just EA's beta history, but maybe in the entire gaming industry. Have you ever heard of maybe... 9 million players are playing another game besides Star Wars Battlefront? This is really, really groundbreaking. It just goes to show you how much uh, fans really appreciate Star Wars. Because, uh, well, when I was a kid, I, I used to watch some of the Star Wars films. Uh, I watched, uh, well, I did watch the first uh, film, and I've even caught glimpses of the um, second and third, and really enjoyed the, the last three. I'm not so sure about the seventh film. Uh, it could be one of those uh, films like, um, yeah, it's great, but I really don't like that part. Um, but games, uh, Star Wars games, uh, there have been some good Star Wars games, but uh, I really couldn't put my finger on it. Um, yeah, it's uh, one of those topics that uh, you really, really like, but um, you've really got to avoid it uh, somewhat. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is... It's not only big for EA, the beta uh, recorded uh, 9 million players, but uh, it could actually be the biggest uh, that the games industry has ever seen. Could we have seen a Guinness Book of Records uh, actually being made through the beta play? Hey, uh, Facebook comments are always welcome, so please make sure that you're ready and willing. And may the force be with you. Now we're on to something uh, really, really interesting uh, in my book. Uh, NX, uh, the Nintendo NX, uh, this is really one of the most interesting topics that I've seen. Uh, it could possibly link uh, consoles and handhelds together, uh, and it's uh, one of the most, uh, well, amazing reports I've ever seen. You have never seen a console that could actually just uh, do not only the console gaming, but possibly handheld. With the Wii, when the Wii U was released, um, it was uh, one of those game and consoles that, um, it's alright, but for that price, I don't know. But I got it uh, when it was uh, first launched. I got one of those um, high memory uh, Wii U consoles. It was it was really awesome. I enjoyed it, um, and I still do. It's uh, one of those consoles that um, yeah, it was one of those risky things. And uh, Mr. Iwata, he said, uh, well, since we're not making enough money with the Nintendo Wii U, I'll take the pay cut. I'll take a pay cut. Uh, that really showed how much uh, Mr. Iwata really cared for his company to make sure that it didn't go down the drain. Um, and to lo not lose uh, some of his employees. Yeah, so anyway, back to the NX. Uh, there could be two devices for it, uh, not only for the console, but it could also have a handheld capability. But we still have um, with, uh, no idea what this Nintendo NX is capable of, or what its scopes is, uh, how many players will there be, uh, what's its online um, features, or how many uh, 
how much uh, memory could a standard NX console contain? But uh, it's Nintendo has hinted that there could be a handheld and console mergings somewhere in this development line. I think might be the most interesting part about this. You don't normally see uh, console and handheld games uh, working closely together. You know, it's um, sort of, I can't really describe uh, a situation like this. It's one of those um, rare cases uh, that Nintendo is doing. And, um, we've normally seen uh, Nintendo uh, not only focus on its consoles uh, separately, but also with its handhelds. Uh, they've got some great handheld games uh, coming out soon with Project Cross Song 2 and. Um, Whew, uh, we've got uh, a few Wii U games left um, that could, um, uh, well, make history, uh, well, m- keep the Wii U uh, surviving uh, for maybe a little bit longer before the uh, release of the NX. Uh, there, there are some, uh, p- from, uh, I don't have any ideas on uh, what could uh, make the uh, NX uh, different from the other consoles. Uh, we're actually, um, it's definitely one to keep your eye out, folks. Um, uh, whether it's uh, going to have the same functionalities as Wii U or s- some of them, uh, maybe take some of the good functions of the uh, Wii and the Wii U and put it together in this uh, NX. And uh, maybe, well, with its uh, possibility of handheld uh, merging development uh, with the consoles, it's one of those um, one of those uh, projects that could say, "Wow, now why didn't we think of this sooner?" Uh, um, this is. Definitely uh, one of the most interesting um, uh, pieces of news that I've seen about the Nintendo NX. Uh, uh, how they're going to merge the two, uh, the handheld and the consoles development teams, I have no idea. We're going to have to see uh, where it comes. Uh, and uh, it's one of those those, um, those uh, gambles that you normally see on um, uh, when you buy a player of... Um, well, hypothetically, when you buy a player from... Uh, Say, um, say if say if I was um, the manager of Celtic Football Club and I wanted to buy a player, yeah, that uh, well, say he was from um, maybe mm, Liverpool or um, Manchester City, yeah, I want to make sure that this player is one of the best. Uh, if he's got a better goal goal difference uh, than the other, or how how many yellow cards? Uh, it's a risk versus reward system in my book. So game development, uh, no. Normally, uh, you don't want to uh, make sure that uh, your handheld and the consoles are uh, separate when it comes to gameplay and uh, ex- uh, features. It's, um, it's the 3DS. It does have its uh, Street Pass functionality, but the Wii U it does have the uh, tablet, uh, the two screens, um, and it was quite kind of. It is fun, but uh, there aren't that many games for the Wii U that use the full potential of the tablet controller, uh, and I think that's the really really bad part about um, the Wii U, but it is it could possibly be a hidden gold mine if you know when to strike, when the iron is hot. What a scenario for Nintendo. Uh, maybe game, well, maybe other game developers, so when they get their hands on the uh, NX software and come up with great game ideas, maybe another Super Mario game for NX, or I'm quite looking forward to uh, seeing another Fire Emblem uh, on the console, a strategy game, or maybe a uh, puzzle game, uh, something uh, really, really fun. If you agree with some of the uh, game ideas that I come up with, uh, do leave a comment on Facebook. I'm really, really looking forward to the NX in the coming year. And I'm going to stick with uh, Nintendo uh, this week, ladies and gentlemen, because uh, Paper Ma- well, Mario and Luigi uh, Paper Jam Bros unfolds. Uh, well, it's uh, got a release date for ne- uh, December this year. It is uh, going to be released on the 4th of December 2015, and it is the 5th Mario and Luigi game that's come out uh, from Nintendo, and it's uh, probably going to fill the gap left by the Star Fox for the Wii U, who, uh, when it was announced, it was pushed back. It's definitely uh, one of those uh, games that could uh, definitely keep the bridge together uh, before the release of Star Fox. Um, yeah, I, I've played some of the uh, Paper Mario games in the past before, and uh, I quite enjoyed it. Um, I played, uh, well, I've got... Um, Partners in Time, and I've also got the original one for the Virtual Console. I, I, I gotta admit, that those games were quite funny, yeah. If you've played uh, one of the Paper Mario, uh, no, not the Paper Mario, sorry, the uh, Mario and Luigi uh, RPG games uh, made by Nintendo. Oh, it's one of those um, situations uh, where um, Nintendo uh, can't really uh, come up with uh, good, well, they don't want to uh, 
rush things with a um, platforming game uh, in, uh, like uh, Super Mario Brothers Wii U. Uh, I, I I must admit I enjoyed it and uh, <laughs> uh, excuse me, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, back to the Mario and Luigi. Um, it's one of those games that you have really gotta try. Yeah, uh, well, see before you play. Uh, I've uh, played uh, the Pilots in Time uh, for the 3D uh, for the DS, sorry, and uh, I quite enjoyed it. Uh, the story was very funny, and I really liked it, uh, especially the gameplay uh, where you uh, had not only uh, the grown-up uh, mode for this, but the baby versions as well. Uh, it's really one of those games uh, that can uh, definitely uh, still leave its uh, mark uh, on the Mario industry, like it has done for the past uh, 30 years. Um, and uh, it's so, and it's uh, definitely. Uh, the most interesting uh, story thus far because now you know, it's not just a Mario and Luigi game but it's also uh, got elements of Paper Mario. If you played uh, some of the Paper Mario uh, games like uh, uh, Paper Mario or Super Paper, Ma Super Paper Mario uh, for, the, uh, for the consoles, uh, the Nintendo consoles, uh, you'll know exactly the, uh, where I'm going with this. Normally we don't have um, one Mario game crossover with another uh, and uh, what Nintendo have done uh, with this uh, is pretty interesting. I'm definitely looking forward to it. Uh, and and uh, I, I haven't seen much of the um, gameplay uh, for the game yet. Uh, I'm definitely wanting to uh, restrain myself from watching any more of those uh, gameplay videos uh, to make sure that I uh, get a good idea. Well, to make sure that I'm surprised uh, for what happens uh, in the future. And uh, I haven't actually really purchased uh, the other two Mario games, uh, Bowser's Inside Story or um, uh, Dream Team, uh, the, uh, the dream one where you can uh, manipulate uh, Luigi's dreams uh, in the game. I'm uh, really looking forward to uh, seeing what uh, Mario and Luigi Paper Jam Brothers uh, will have uh, for the 3DS. It's uh, definitely... Um, gonna uh, be one of those interesting games uh, and well it's gotta be one of those uh, games where you've uh, definitely got to try before you buy so uh, search YouTube uh, for some Mario and Luigi um, I definitely suggest uh, looking at uh, Superstar Saga because uh, that's where the original Mario and Luigi uh, game uh, comes from um, uh, just search YouTube for Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga I'll leave the name of the game uh, well, on Facebook instead. Uh, that would be easier for everyone. And uh, you can all search for it on YouTube. Uh, see if you can get some gameplay uh, footage on it. And uh, you'll see why I'm interested in this series. It's I'm a really big uh, RPG, play, RPG player. And uh, it's uh, one of those games where you've got to say, Well, this is interesting. Let's see if I can do anything better like than that. Uh, let me give, have a go at the game. And... Uh, Yes, uh, I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, December the 4th, 2015 is the real official release date for uh, Mario and Luigi Paper Jam Brothers. And from one Nintendo franchise to another, we're going to Twilight for Legend of Zelda. Yes, apparently there could be a Twilight Princess HD remake. Uh, it's been nearly 10 years since uh, the original Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess for not only the Wii, but also the GameCube uh, back in in 2006, uh, when it was first announced um, uh, for the Wii on uh, E3 in 2005, I was really stoked. I was uh, quite looking forward to this uh, game. It's uh, <laughs> it's one of those uh, games uh, where it's aged with time, uh, like a fine wine. Oh, well, I'm a poet and I didn't do it. <laughs> um, yeah, and uh, it's uh, definitely something that I'm... If it's a uh, collector's edition, uh, which we will be t discussing about uh, later on... Um, I think it's, uh, I'll definitely get it, uh, but here's the thing, it's not going to be released for Virtual Console, and, uh, well, that could possibly be, uh, mean that there will be different functionalities, uh, for not only, uh, the Wii U, but for the game as well. So, I don't know what it's going to be like, uh, for, say, the hookshot or the fishing rod, uh, which could... Uh, could uh, deter me from, uh, my point of view uh, on the original series. He's, uh, well, when the game was originally released, uh, I'm still, uh, I still got stuck at the last boss of the game. <laughs> yeah, um, you've definitely, well, I know there are a lot of, um, Legends of Zelda players out there, and, uh, the Twilight Princess, it's one of those, uh, hugest selling Zelda games out there, and, uh, 
I'm really looking forward to seeing if there could be a HD remake. And here's the thing, the Wind, The Legend of Zelda, The Wind Waker, when it was first released for the Nintendo GameCube, is the only HD remake for the Zelda series. So yeah, I'm actually looking forward to seeing a The Legend of Zelda uh, and a Twilight Princess HD remake. Uh, we'll get, we're coming to this um, psych this uh, trend uh, in uh, game society um, where we enjoyed games uh, from a, from the not so uh, distant past uh, like uh, Metal Gear Solid 2, or th 2 and 3 or maybe the Jack and Daxter collection and uh, we really want to play it but uh, we don't have uh, access to last gen consoles like we normally did uh, back then so what games companies did was um hey uh, we know these fans like this game series so much let's uh let's remake it for in this time in uh, high definition it's uh definitely a very effective uh, technique uh, making sure that the graphics there are really really done up uh, for the uh, new consoles uh the ps3 or the xbox 360 depending on which uh hd collection uh, you get you've uh, purchased the uh, game for and basically playing it over and over again and this time uh, with achievements or trophies or whatever it is uh you you're playing uh, yeah um i'm actually uh one of those uh big fans of old games um like um twilight princess uh and i'm really looking forward to uh Possibly some news about um, a Twilight Princess HD remake. Um, yeah, it's one of those uh, times where you say, "Look, I really like the H. I really like the game before it was HD. I really want to see what it's like in HD." There is this is the time for to bring back old games and give them the uh, new breath of life with the HD graphics and whatnot. The controllers they're fine. It's just the graphics. You gotta update the graphics before you unleash them from uh, onto the market. And uh, we've. Definitely got to keep it well with the announcement of uh, the Final Fantasy uh, 7 It could be possible that that we could see a game HD remix. Um, I'm more interested in seeing um, HD remix for uh, Final Fantasy 12 um, ooh, uh, <laughs> Sorry ladies and gentlemen, there's uh, so many games that I like I just cannot think of a uh, possible uh, game title f that could get a HD remake. But if you think of any games that you want to see a HD remake of, do leave a comment on Facebook. Look, we're looking forward to it. And we're gonna stick with uh, the n more Nintendo news, cause uh, apparently there is linked list of uh, games, uh, p games for the Nintendo Virtual Console that was um, probably coming out soon. But uh, there are some games here that I just, I just don't think that could happen. Um, well. There was some that I, I there was one that I do like the look of, um, but there is one that I can't seem to um shake the feeling that it's just not going to happen, and I can't see it happening. <laughs> um, one of the games uh, that could uh, come out on the list is uh, New Super Mario Brothers for the uh, Nintendo Wii, and uh, I've played it. Uh, it was um it was one of those great games, uh, and uh, you've got to uh, really play. Uh, it's Still got the elements of the older classic Mario games, uh, and uh, well brought to life in 3D, 3D, 2D platforming. It's really great. And the list that I've seen is mostly Japanese uh, titles that could come out uh, for the Nintendo Wii U's Virtual Console. I'm just um, not pos not quite sure if some of them could be coming out uh, for um, uh, the Europeans. Um, like uh, Legend of Zelda Spirit Tracks or Mario uh, Tennis from the Nintendo 64. Well, I have uh, seen um, some of the games. Um, I, I took the uh, liberty to um, go back and uh, search for games uh, for on the Wii U console for or the uh, on the well last night, and uh, I did see some games that I liked. Um, I saw Metabots and I saw some Mega Man Zero. Oh, uh, I'm just having my doubts because there is one game on that list that I have my concerns about. And it's a game called Kamen Rider Summon Ride. And uh, this is definitely one of those those games that uh, it could be a possibility. It just might. It just will not happen. And uh, let me explain. Kamen Rider Summon Ride is a uh, game for the Wii U. It's sort of like uh, Skylanders uh, Swap Force or uh, whatever Skylanders games you've got. Uh, in your house, and basically, 
doesn't use uh, monsters or dragons or anything like that. It uses superheroes, people that can turn into superheroes, so uh, and uh, have them battle through uh, different al uh, areas. And it, I just don't see the common writer the game coming out uh, into uh, Europe, because basically, Common Rider, it is a Japan-only television show, and I, I just can't see Common Rider coming out of Japan. It, it only happened twice, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'll explain this uh, right now. Uh, I'll, I'll go for, I'll go off topic for this. Uh, the list, uh, Common Rider, has only appeared twice uh, in the Western uh, TV shows. Uh, the first one was Masked Rider. It was originally uh, Common Rider Black uh, back in the late uh, 1970s or 80s. I can't really remember. It was a long time ago when that show was originally aired in Japan. And uh, the second one, it is a American-only show. It's called Common Rider Dragon Knight, and it's basically about uh, a guy uh, who called it transforms into uh, uh, this hero to um, try and battle, well, to survive against uh, 11 other common riders, but one of those common riders is a good guy. I, uh, so, uh, I'm just not, s I just don't see common rider summon ride coming out for Nintendo Wii U here in Europe. Uh, but it's definitely one of those games where Nintendo has possibly, uh, I don't know, um, I'd say they just accidentally l put the name of the game into the European uh, section instead of keeping it in the Japan only, because uh, Kamen Rider is very popular in Japan, it's very popular with kids, uh, but I only watch the TV shows, I don't play with the stuff. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, it's not going to happen, I don't see Kamen Rider of uh, Summon Rider uh, coming out in Europe. I can see New Super Mario Brothers, I can see Wild Gunman, and I can see Hogan's Alley, but I'm not seeing Kamen Rider. I'm definitely not seeing Kamen Rider Summon Ride. Uh, do you agree with me? Yeah, and do you believe this leaked list of games that could possibly come out for the Wii U? Leave your comment on Facebook, because let me tell you this, ladies and gentlemen. Kamen Rider Summon Ride is not coming out to Europe. I repeat, Kamen Rider is not riding into Europe. So let's go into another topic. Uh, if you ever played Sticks, uh, it is uh, gonna. It is a stealth-based uh, game, and uh, a news just came out uh, on uh, Wednesday, ladies and gentlemen, that there's gonna be a sequel to Sticks. Um, uh, it's good. It's been in development for six months right now, uh, and it's looking like one of those. Uh, well, I haven't played um, the original uh, Sticks game um, uh, before, but it's stealth-based. Uh, it's about uh, a, a goblin assassin that's uh, doing uh, uh, killing other monsters. So uh, the sequel title is called Masters of uh, Master of Shadows. Oh, so uh, it's from a studio called Cyanide, and it's uh, due to come out for um, PC, PS4, and Xbox One sometime in 2016. And I'm actually well, it looks interesting, but I haven't actually played the any of the other s any of the other sticks games uh, that's come out for the um, or for the series. Um, I'm one of those guys that uh, uh, played um, Metal Gear Solid. Uh, yeah, uh, that was one of the my, that was the very first uh, stealth series of games that I've played, uh, it, and I really enjoyed it. Um, it's definitely uh, in, one of my favorites where you have to think uh, before you act. Now, well, back to sticks, and uh, it's been in development, uh, like I said, for half a year. Yeah, and, uh, well, details about it are, uh, still, in, still foggy at best. I'm definitely gonna try and avoid, uh, getting into more details, uh, but, uh, there aren't some new functions that we uh, added to the game. Um, uh, it looks like one of those, um, uh, games where it's, uh, deep in story and, uh, the gameplay is really wonderful that you definitely want to, uh, get your hands on it. Um, stealth games, uh, we haven't seen a lot of them, uh, in recent years, um, and, and especially with the release of Metal Gear Solid V, uh, The Phantom Pain. It's, uh, definitely one of those games where you really, 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 um, want to get your, get a try at it. Uh, if you've ever played a Metal Gear Solid game in the past, uh, you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, stealth-based games, they they are coming, uh, they're becoming more technology obsessed, uh, and, uh, you're not getting a lot of, uh, stealth games where you have to, uh, plan, uh, on what's gonna happen next. You definitely, uh, it's one of those games where you have to, uh, think before you act. You have to study the enemy, and think like an assassin himself. You 
definitely want to stay in the uh, darkness to make sure that uh, the enemy doesn't see you. If you played Metal Gear, no, like I said, uh, Metal Gear, it's one of my favorites. Uh, well, with the uh, genome soldiers, uh, the giant walking deathmobile, or oh, that. That was that's one of my favorite moments. Though when you get to battle Metal Gear, Rack, it's one of those games where you um uh, one of those games uh in the stealth genre that uh, really has you uh embroiled. Uh, you really uh, got your your know, teeth into the story. You really, really, really like the gameplay so far. All the all the weapons, all the cool tech, uh, even um well in Metal Gear, uh, you can even use uh, a magazine uh, weapon. Uh, in general, I I'm not gonna go into into um any uh, uh yeah let's just say that uh, you can use um a lot of stuff uh, like uh, empty magazines or uh, you could put enemies to sleep. But uh, the sticks game, it's all um all about death. Um, just looking at it, uh, I'm really intrigued by it. I I really want to see if I can get the um, original game of uh, the first. Sticks game. I'll, I'll have to look into it and uh, see if I can uh, try and get uh, an original copy of the first game and uh, see if I can. Uh, well, when I get the time, I'll give it a play. And, uh, well, Sticks. Um, it must have been really good if it's going to get a sequel. It has been uh, in development for about six months. Um, well, that's nearly a year. You know, and if uh, I'm correct, uh, which I sometimes am, but that's it's started in uh, April of 2015. So. It's definitely one of those games uh, that could say, "Oh, look at me! I'm I'm more better than I used to be." So keep an eye out for sticks. Uh, I know I will. And uh, if you and if you like the stealth uh, game genre, do leave your comments on Facebook. Cause uh, and for the last bit of news from this week, uh, it's pretty upsetting. Uh, I've got to say, uh, Rock Band Four has uh, only come into 10th place uh, in the official UK Top 10 charts. Um, it's lost to the likes of Destiny, Lego Dimensions, uh, Dr- the Uncharted Drake Collection, and, um, yeah, it's, uh, def- it had a lot of hype to it, but it just couldn't really f- back it up uh, when it came to um, the official launch. It was a really disappointing moment. Uh, there were other, ty- other games uh, that were released uh, that weekend, and I gotta say, Rock Band got beaten. I I didn't think it would make it into the top ten. Um, yeah, it's lost to the likes of FIFA, still lost to Grand Theft Auto, and Animal Crossing. It lost to Animal Crossing and Metal Gear Solid Five. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Rock Band uh, is one of the. Uh, it's a music game uh, where you get to recreate uh, your favorite um, rock songs uh, from all from the uh, well from all time, uh, like uh, the Rolling Stones, um, Rage Against the Machine, Disturbed, or or any um, song that you like. Uh, I've I played the four of the Guitar Hero games, uh, which is the uh, main competitor of uh, two rock bands, and I'm just, and I gotta say, I I'm just shocked to see a rock band, uh, a music game, a game that people could pop band uh, with uh, their friends, uh, four other people, and, and it lost to uh, games like uh, Animal Crossing and uh, Metal Gear Solid 5. I'm just shocked. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I'm just, this is really, really upsetting. Uh, I don't know how the uh, the, uh, the studio behind Rock Band is going to come back from this. I really don't know. Oh, uh, there are other games I lost to. Uh, and the most surprising one, in my books, is Metal Gear Solid. It was, uh, I've been seeing uh, some of the reviews on uh, TV and uh, the internet, and I gotta say, I, I have mixed, uh, I've got mixed opinions about the game, but uh, I've, I've, I've played Ground Zeroes, I still, I still want to play, I still want to play Ground Zeroes, so, uh, well, when I get a chance, um, and it's, I'm just surprised that uh, Metal Gear Solid 5, uh, even with uh, Kojima officially announcing that he's leaving um, Konami, uh, I just don't see how Metal Gear Solid 5 uh, beat Rock Band. I thought Rock Band would be uh, higher up the charts. And it, and it also lost to Lego Dimensions, the most expensive game on the market, in my opinion. And, uh, it's worth £85 at uh, Lego Dimensions, and it still beat um, Rock Band. I'm just amazed that. Uh, Yes, the rock band. Uh, it was one of those. It had one of the biggest hypes uh, when it was uh, re- when it was announced for the major consoles, and uh, I just I'm just surprised. 
is uh, we don't know how many units um, Rock Pants 4 sold, uh, and we s there were no sales uh, <laughs> announced. It doesn't tell us uh, how many units Rock Band sold on its first week of launch. And I don't think uh, the, um, the companies uh, are going to make the announcement. And this could really, really um, put uh, a question mark over Rock Band. But uh, we still got Guitar Hero Live uh, coming out for uh, Xbox One and PS4. It's, uh, it could actually take over Rock Band uh, in the charts, uh, in my opinion. Whether it beats uh, Uncharted or uh, FIFA, it's really, really um, up to how well um, Guitar Hero advertises uh, on TV and on the internet. It's already advertising on um, Facebook, and it looks really good. But how it advertises on TV, it is really, really up to the um, the publisher. Do you think um, Rock Band uh, ha didn't get the uh, credit uh, it deserved? Please do leave your comment on Facebook. And now let's go on to the Emperor's topic, and we are discussing collector's edition games. And well, it's one of those interesting topics. If you've ever, if you've seen the uh, video that I posted on YouTube, I showed you uh, Dragon Quest Heroes and uh, Discover Five, uh, the unboxing on both of those games. And I've, I'm, I'm just wondering. Uh, well, there haven't been a lot of comments on Facebook. I gotta admit, uh, this will have to be a, another topic uh, where we will, where we will, um. Collector's editions, uh, yeah, it's one of those uh, topics where you really, really, um, you really want to get a collector's edition not only because for the game but also the contents that come with the game. Uh, the Dragon Quest Hero game uh, that I showed off uh, in the video, it came with the um, slime uh, plushie, uh, the the layered, the layered, uh, the thing that goes around your neck and uh, a key ring. Uh, I really wanted the collector's edition because, uh, well. I'm a big fan of the Dragon Heroes uh, series myself. Um, I bought uh, Dragon Quest VIII: uh, the, Qu the Journey of the Cursed King, and I really, I really wanted to come back uh, as a HD remake on, on PS3 or PS4. Either one of those two would do. Um, I'm not a big fan of um, of it coming uh, out for the Nintendo 3DS. Uh, I just, I don't know how that's gonna work. Um, I'm also. Uh, I'm oh, a big fan of the Disgaea series. Uh, when I saw that it was coming out uh, in a uh, special edition, I just uh, got it uh, right away. Uh, but one of my favorite collector's editions uh, that I've got uh, right now, it's uh, the StarCraft IIs. Um, the Wings of Liberty and Heart of the Swarm. Those are my favorite uh, collector's editions that I've got because I'm a, I'm a big StarCraft II player myself. And I'm and a huge fan. I enjoyed the story so much. It's really, really fun to play. Hey, you've got to really build up your army, make sure that it's uh, strong enough to take on the on the enemy. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. <laughs> it was a, it's a lot of fun. And um, well, when well, I'm hoping to get the uh, next StarCraft uh, Two uh, collector's edition, the uh, Legacy of the Void. Uh, that's definitely that is going to be the last game in the series. He's, uh, where it goes from here, you know, I'm definitely looking forward to, to seeing at, uh, the BlizzCon. And, uh, do you have a favorite collector's edition, uh, that you would like to sh share with me on Facebook or maybe YouTube? Uh, just leave a comment. And the, uh, topic for next week's, uh, Empress topic, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Well, I should say ladies, because we are going to be discussing female gamers, uh, they are not getting the um, attention that male gamers are getting, and I don't think that's very fair on them. Do you agree with me? Just leave your comments um, on uh, Facebook or YouTube, um, and I will put, and I will read them out uh, next week. If you want to use the uh, hashtag, the Empress Topic, uh, to get involved with the conversation, do so. That's all you have to do. Ooh, and uh, leave it out on my Facebook page. Uh, just search for the Empress Voice on Facebook. And finally, uh, well, we don't really have any questions uh, for Ask the Emperor. I'm, I'm a little uh, upset about this, but uh, if you still want to get involved, just use the hashtag Ask the Emperor on, the YouTube, on YouTube or Facebook, and uh, I will answer your questions on the next podcast. Well, I'm afraid that's all I've got time for, ladies and gentlemen. It has been lovely yeah, giving my opinions and whatnot, and I hope to see you next week. And do remember to uh, go to the Facebook page and uh, follow. Well, thank you very much. Have a good weekend. Happy gaming, ladies and gentlemen. Happy gaming.